Okay, I'm going to show you two scriptures that integrationists often like to twist to teach their satanic heresy, their one world government type heresy, their end times heresy of integration and that the overall one human race and all this other stuff. It does tie into the one world government because how is the Antichrist going to have a one world government if there's no integration, if everyone's separate? He has to bring everyone together. Basic fact. But one of the scriptures they love to run to is Galatians 3.28. I'm going to read it to you says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. And I'll say, see, you're all one, there's no, there's no distinction, there's no, we're all just one human race. Is that what it's saying? No, it's not. The verse prior to Galatians 3.28 is simply explaining, the verse prior and the verse after, is simply explaining that a Jew is saved the same way as a Gentile is being saved. It's not saying there's no more kindred, it's just saying a Jew and a Gentile are, are saved the exact same way and that Christ will save anyone regardless of their kindred. That's what it's saying. Paul is not saying that race no longer exists or that there's no more racial distinction. Also notice how the verse says there is neither male nor female. So if we're going to be consistent here, it would mean that this verse is saying there's no more gender, which is ridiculous because there are distinct gender roles and gender distinction that are given in Scripture. You can see 1 Corinthians 11, 3 to 10, 1 Corinthians 14, 34 to 35, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25, Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to 19, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, and 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. We have distinct gender roles given, but by the integrationist logic and how they view that verse, I guess that verse is saying there's no more, there's neither male nor female either. So I guess we're all just androgynous or whatever. No, it's saying that Everyone's saved the same way. Christ will save anyone regardless of their gender and regardless of their kindred. But it's not saying there's no more kindred or that we're all just one human race. Ridiculous. The next common scripture we'll, talk, we'll often twist is Acts 17.26. Let's go there. And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation. And you'll say, see, we're all of one blood, we're all one human race. Um, is that what it's saying? Again, that is partly true. We are all of one blood. But notice how they won't read the full verse. Notice how they don't read the entire verse or give basically give basically pay, pay attention to the entire verse. I'll put it that way. They only quote the first part of the verse, and if they do quote the full verse, they'll only hammer on the first part of the verse. Notice how they won't read the part of the verse that says, and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. What's it saying? We're all equal, and God separated them. He determined the bounds of their habitation. So we're all of one blood, yes, but then God has determined our bounds. Acts 17.26 ties in with Deuteronomy 32, verses 7 to 8. says, Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations, ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So he separated, he divided the people. You can read about that in Genesis 10, how God divided the Gentile nations and separated them. God likes distinction, God likes separation. So Acts 17, 26 is saying that God made all the humans with one blood. We all come from Adam and Eve, but God also separated the kindreds and determined where they're going to stay, where, where the kindreds are going to dwell. That's what it's saying. It's not saying there's no more, that, that there's no more distinction that we're all just one human race. That's not at all what it's saying. Totally twisting what it's saying, and they don't read the full verse. They won't, you know, talk about the full verse. They only quote the first part of it and won't quote the second part of it, which proves that God likes racial separation. So those are two common scriptures that are twisted by pro-integrationists to prove their integrationist heresy that oh, racial miscegenation is fine, interracial, interracial marriage is fine. They twist these scriptures and they twist other ones too, but these are the two main ones I see them use. So don't be deceived by this end times heresy of racial integration. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.